from the Fighting Irish. They do take the field first, so it's not an Ohio State LSU scene. <laughs> Irish come in with an eight and one record ranked number seven and there are Cotton Bowl scouts here. The Penn State Nittany Lions have had a marvelous uh, record. They're seven and three this year. They have won five of their last six meetings against the Irish at Notre Dame. And as Dick said at the outset, Notre Dame has never won here at Beaver Stadium. Not many people do win up in this stadium. That's right. This is Happy Valley and Beaver Stadium and there might be some confusion over the name of the stadium. It was named for a lieutenant general in the Civil War who was a graduate of Penn State, John Beaver, who left here shortly after the Civil War started and uh, was very instrumental in the Penn State athletic program, served as the president of Penn State down around the turn of the century, but uh, has nothing to do with an animal. This is the home of the Nittany Lions. <laughs> Five, five, and one in the last meeting last year, Penn State held off a furious Notre Dame charge at the end of the ballgame to win 24-19. And Tim Brown, the Heisman candidate, he is back to return the kick. And uh, Dick, you've got an interesting factor in his kickoff capability. Well, this guy, he's returned 44 kickoffs while attending Notre Dame, and he's put three of them in the end zone for touchdown. That's hard to do. And the breeze is blowing. It was uh, fairly comfortable until about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon when this norther blew through. And snow flurries all last night. We've had sun intermittently this afternoon. We're underway at last. And it's taken short. Braxton Banks returns. And the Irish will set up for the ball. First and 10 at the 31 yard line. Tackle made by Darrell Washington. At quarterback for the Irish will be the freshman Tony Rice. He can run. The fullback Anthony Johnson and Mark Green at the tailback spot. Mark Green really good on the outside option play. And at wide receivers, Tim Brown and Reggie Ward, of whom you will not hear a lot throughout the game. <laughs> First and ten, fighting Irish. Reggie Ward goes wide right. Tim Brown comes to the left. And you look at Tony Rice from the eye formation on first down. Mark Green is hit at the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by the senior, Matt Johnson, number 51. The offensive line, and this has been a standout element for the Irish this year. Chuck Lanza, the All-American, is the center. He's the captain. He's the leader. At the guards, Tom Freeman and Tim Grunhard. Lou is really high on Tim. And the offensive tackles, Tom Rader and Byron Spruell. A couple of big bookends. At tight end, Andy Heck, it's second and nine. Toss, they come left. And Green cuts inside and gets maybe two before Keith Karpinski, number 84, makes the tackle. Nittany Lion defense, and we begin with Oatoa Polamalu at nose guard. That's pretty good. Yeah, you did a good job with that one. Kirkendall and Matt Johnson at the tackles. Kirkendall's a real seasoned vet. And the outside linebackers, Karpinski and Kurt Bernier. Bernier's been hurt most of the year. Third and seven, Notre Dame. Tony Rice wants to change the play. They can't hear the audible. The fullback, Anthony Johnson, that's short of the first down. And the Irish will have to punt into this strong wind as Pete Kirkendall, number 73, makes the tackle. Now the players are fighting already. This is going to be an intense game for four quarters. The emotion is really high. That's Tom Rader, number 76. One of those involved. And it'll be fourth down, Vince Phelan, who has averaged 41.8 this season. I think he gives them a little edge. Now, punting into the win will be a problem, but he, you know, not only for distance, but for the return man to field the ball. Those return men are number five, Michael Timpson, an all-world-class sprinter, and Tim, Jim Coates, the senior number 49. I wouldn't want to field him today back there. Low kick, but a good one, considering the circumstance. Timpson picks it up, no return. He's down at the 35. It's one of those, I got it, no, you take it. <laughs> Andre Jones, number seven, makes the tackle, a 30-yard punt. Offensively for Penn State, the senior quarterback, Matt Kisner, opens it up. He has a strong arm, much stronger than I thought when I watched him on the practice field the other day. John Green, the fullback, only 185, and Blair Thomas, a tailback. Blair Thomas, the best running back on the field. At the wide receivers, the senior gets to start, Jim Coates, Michael Alexander. Also is a starter today. Ray Roundtree will not play for the fourth consecutive week because of injury. First and ten. And Kisner with his backs split behind him. Penn 
Dolphins. They will throw on first down, and they want to go deep into man coverage left side. Battle for the ball. Caught. Intercepted. Intercepted. It's Marv Spence who got it. Two wide receivers to the left side now. And as you watch things develop, always keep in mind the presence of the wind. Anthony Johnson up the middle into the arms of Pete Kirkendall, number 73. Second down and five. No score. 12-13 to go. First quarter. Fumble. Fumble. Rice appears to have recovered it. A problem when the center snap with Chuck Lanza. You know, the hands are a little bit cold right now, and that kind of thing, and that could be a factor. Third and six as Holtz begins his five-mile walk along the sideline. Wishbone. That means Tim Brown at a halfback spot. They come to the left side. It is Timmy Brown who tries to circle Great outside defense. and cannot break the tackle as Karpinski gets the stop. That'll bring on Vince Phelan for the second time, and this time Jim Coates is... Uh, Barely 35 yards downfield. Phelan with his second punt of the ball game. And again, under the circumstances, not bad, but good field position for Jim Coates and the Pitney Lions. They have the ball at the 49-yard line. First down, 10, Penn State. Fumble. There's, they're trading off on that play. Each team's had one. That's got to be partially the weather, Dick. Yeah, sometimes. You, and, Plus, maybe the emotion. Most of the time, the quarterback has calmed down by this time. Sometimes the center hasn't yet, and he's coming off a little bit early. 10-19 to go. First quarter, no score. And Kisner will throw for the second time in the ball game. Oh, he won't. Randy Wells coming on a corner blitz. Corner blitz coming off the weak side. And a quick kick. Chris Klaus has come on. And the Penn State Nittany Lions Boy, will use advantage of the wind. And Klaus kicks it, and not particularly a fast football. It maybe has worked. It's close. No official. Now oh, there's the signal. Vern, what happens in the quick kick situation, you don't have your normal punt returner in at the safety position. He's not used to fielding punts under pressure. Even though that was a bad punt, it's still a pressure move. And it's first and 10 now after the uh, fumble recovery at the 19-yard line. Gibson starts in motion. Kisner hands it off to Blair Thomas. And he surges down to the 11-yard line, perhaps the 10. And it's second down and one. No score, nine minutes to go, first quarter. Good time to throw it. Up, oh, they'll hand it off. Oh, up the middle. John Green, touchdown. Ray Tarassi on to try the extra point. Lou Holtz's team has fallen behind by seven. Eric Eats will kick off for Penn State. Tim Brown, the deep men of three. And again, a squib kick. Notre Dame has enjoyed terrific field position all season long because of the fear of kicking it deep to Timmy Brown. From the wishbone, first down and ten. Tony Rice, the quarterback. And he'll throw. Flips it left side for Tim Brown. This is trouble. Oh, is it ever? Is it ever skipping down the sidelines and out of bounds at the 33? Little speed screen out there. Just drop back, get the rush up field, and lay it off behind some big offensive linemen. Did an awfully nice job of executing it. First down and 10 after the 29-yard pass. Rice to Tim Brown. This time, backs in the eye. And the strength of the formation to the right. From the 33-yard line, Mark Green comes left. And is hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Matt Johnson up high and Pete Giftopoulos, the senior star of the Fiesta Bowl, made the tackle down low. Second down and nine officially. 7-0. Penn State leads it. Option play. Rice keeps. Rice runs. Needs one block. Gets it. Gets it. Down. Touchdown. Timmy Brown with a block at the goal line. And we're a point away from the tie. Ted Grottle, the fifth-year senior, on for the extra point. We are tied. Ted Grottle will kick off. Blair Thomas and Leroy Thompson, a freshman, are back to return. Look at that wind push it ball back. Look at that. Fair catch call on the kickoff. <laughs> Smart move. Good coaching. First down and 10. 
look at those kind of moves. Thomas with a quick feet. Interesting, you and I saw Reuben Mays, the former great Washington State running back a couple of weeks ago, now playing for the New Orleans Saints. And you, 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 when you saw Thomas, you thought he reminded him of the quick feet factor. He runs the same way. He runs with a real good base. He lowers his center of gravity. He'll pound his feet and boom, he'll break for the open. Good balance. And he sees things, has great vision. Very fine running back. 1,200 yards on the season, an average of 120 per game. Every time he's gone above 100, Penn State has won. Draw play. That sprint draw, and Thomas he is knocked down on the second and five play by Ned Bullcar, number 47. Second down, third and three. Right? And Kisner wants to throw. Fires it out. Top, and, John John Green, and that should be enough for the first down. Well, I don't know. He's getting the benefit of the doubt on that spot, Burn. <laughs> this is Beaver Stadium. First and ten, Penn State, 7-7 seven, seven ball game, 6-19 to go in first quarter. End over. Thomas goes left. Gets a clearing block from Green. Fights his way down to the 42-yard line before Wes Pritchett, number 34, makes the tackle. It's John Green, a fullback. Breaks loose to the 28-yard line. He's getting that good cut back. That's the same thing that they scored on earlier. First down, 10 Penn State. Thomas with Green in front. Nice move to the outside. Oh, and a heck of a hit. tackle. Who, who was that? That was Corny Southall, and I think he felt the brunt of it. Boy, he can hit you. He can put you down. He's been banged up, hadn't been playing a lot. Second down, five Penn State. As Southall goes back to his safety spot, and the sun shines through. There's Thomas. Inside move, and that'll bring up a third and two. Gisner with a play fake into the flat has it. Oh, oh, oh almost nearly off. intercepted. Ned Bolcar, the linebacker, went down to the treetops and the shoe tops. Ray Tarassi, who's only one of four this season, will try the 29, 39 yard field goal. That's low, but it somehow, no, I thought it had driven through. It did not. Tarassi is now one for five. So the score stays 7-7. This is Tim Brown in motion. He's called one thus far for 29 yards. Pitch out. And Mark Green comes left. Picks up a couple of 25. Trey Bauer, number 35. The senior linebacker makes the tackle. Dive play to the fullback. Braxton Banks, number 39. And Pete Kirkendall makes the tackle. Third and six. Notre Dame going into the teeth of a 25 mile per hour breeze. Play fake, handoff, draw play. And Mark Green is nailed, and Phelan will have to come on to punt into the win. Third punt of the first quarter. And again, held up by the wind, and Coates with a fair oh, hit. Yeah, that's too bad. Don Grimm, number 36, the backup linebacker, bumped into Coates after the fair catch. <laughs> Thomas goes left, flag is down. Still runs. Nice cut to his left. I think there was movement on the Penn State side. Let's see what they call. Offside Notre Dame. That will be turned down. John There's Green gets it. The offensive center, Roger Duffy, must be doing a real good job inside uh, on the nose people in the defense there to be able to make that cutback like that, Vern. Must be doing a good job. If they decide they're going to use four downs, it's a good time to go play action pass. Because the field goal isn't a sure thing. That's right. Yep, they'll keep it on the ground. And Green has it, makes it uh, academic with a first and goal plunge. First and goal from the seven, officially. Kisner still has it. In a little trouble. And uh, Frank Stams makes the tackle low. That's the end of the first quarter with our score 7 7. CBS Sports coverage of college football will continue after this message and a word from your local station. 7 7 as we begin quarter number two. Vern Lundquist, Dick Vermeil, Steve Davis alongside. Second down and goal from the eight. That's Mike Timpson in motion. And Kisner hands it off to Blair Thomas, who comes left and gets to the five, where it'll be third and goal from the five. Now Jim Coates goes in motion, number 49. And Kisner on the roll. Good block. Good block. A terrific block.
fires it back incomplete flag in the end zone should be first and goal Borowski is in power eye formation on first and goal they come left John Green stopped just short boy you can hear the pads cracking all the way up here do you hear that pop, pop, pop. I think they'll just do almost the same thing this time, don't you? Just power go straight ahead. No offensive fooling around. No sense in Second and goal from just outside the one. Yeah. Yep. Volkart on top of the man, but it was Daryl Gordon, Flash Gordon, number 38, who got down and tackled him by the ankle. Green comes left and starts back to the right. Toss, Thomas, touchdown, Penn State. the 11th rushing touchdown of the season for the junior and Eric Eats comes on to try the extra point after Tarassi had missed a field goal and that last Penn State drive 34 yards nine plays after the penalty following the fair catch it took 354 and Thomas gets the touchdown run that puts Penn State back on top again the temperature is 20 degrees with the wind the chill factor is eight degrees below zero and it's not going to get any better there's the squib kick and uh, somebody steps in front of Brown, Braxton Banks, they lateral back to Brown, and Tim Brown does get it out to the 42, but again, the fear of Brown gives Notre Dame terrific field position following the kickoff. Option pass, wide open. He's got him open, the tight end, and oh. throws Andy Heck. Well, that brings to mind something Lou Holtz said last night. We can't pass. <laughs> Second down and 10, Notre Dame, Alonzo Jefferson comes in at a wide receiver spot. The option play, the pitch, Mark Green goes left, gets a little bit of a block in the corner, and picks up a first down at the 43-yard line. First and 10, Notre Dame, 12.30 to go, first half. Flip formation, twins to the right side. Dive play to the fullback. See, there it is. That's part of the option series. Goes back to the comment Steve made about uh, hearing things. Here's the option coming to the weak side. And the pitch to Mark Green. Well, that's a good block. Oh, what a dandy downfield block he got from his fullback. They played catch up more than adequately in this eight and one season. He's checking off in the line of scrimmage. Oh, there's the way to get it. Pete Kirkendall and Quintus McDonald get shoulders together and shove Tony Rice down for a loss. Reverse, Tim Brown. Good and somebody stayed at home and did a nice job, and Brown is caught for a loss. It was Quintus McDonald, number 92, who was never fooled on the play. Rice gets a great block. Inter oh! Should have been intercepted by Sherrod Range, number 36 at the 10-yard line. 43-yard field goal attempt for Ted Grottle, who's a 14 of 17 for the year. But even with the wind, he can't get it there. And the Nittany Lions have a first down and 10 from the 26. Blair Thomas tries to cut back, shakes a tackle. See how he does that, Vern? Gets over there, he shakes, he plants that outside foot, bang, he cuts back to the left. He can see that daylight, and if they get any kind of defensive cutoff, they can go ahead and get that thing turned up inside. Penn State has never lost this year when he's gone over 100 yards, which he's done seven times. John Green for the first down, out to the 38-yard line, where he runs into Ned Bolkar, number 47, and they are going into the wind here in the second quarter. Breaks another tackle, and that's another Penn State first down at midfield. First down and 10, Penn State. They'll hand it to the fullback, John Green, who's been utilized effectively here in the first half. Second down, Cousy went out with an injury in the offensive line. Here's Kisner handing off on that counter, the sprint draw, and they come back to the left side, and that's close for another first down at the 40. Look at this, Thomas has got more offensive running than Notre Dame. John Green, same play that they got on the goal line. And Thomas has another first down at the 37. They're doing a terrific job into the wind here in the second quarter. Thomas again, nice wiggle behind the line to shake free of a potential tackle. Second and five in our ball game with 6.20 to go first half. Thomas darts to the outside and cuts down to the 30-yard line before the tackle is made. That'll bring up a third and one. 
He is the number three single season rusher in Penn State history behind Lydell Mitchell and John Capaletti. And that's coming in today. He's got 1292 for the season. Coates is a motion man. That'll be close for the first down as Sean Borowski, the sophomore fullback out of Harrisburg, PA, gets the carry. Fourth and one. Big play. They changed formations from the last formation, so they also probably changed the play. And here's the handoff to Thomas. That will be close. Oh, very close. That will in all likelihood require another measurement. Here he is going up. He meets the linebacker right in the point of deck. Good job by Ned Bolkar. Ned Bolkar did a real good job of taking the fullback, stuffing him at the point of attack inside the hole. Good job by Ned Bolkar. And Bolkar's tackle denies Penn State a first down. The Irish have held and take over with five minutes to go. Notre Dame, eight and one for the year. Penn State, seven and three. And Tony Rice will throw for the third time, and he's going deep for Brown into zone coverage and overthrows him. And good downfield coverage by Willie Thomas, the freshman, second and ten. They're changing the defensive front. Rice on the roll. And he's got three men to help supply blocks. First down, Notre Dame at the 43-yard line. Boy, that's what he does best, run the football. They might as well, you know, you know, they've been averaging 11 passes with him playing quarterback. You can see why they don't throw 22. Rice has 43 yards on four carries, cuts inside, and is knocked down at the 45. Kirkendall and McDonald. 4.05 to go, second and nine. Fighting Irish trail by seven. With a Cotton Bowl bid waiting for them at the end of this ball game. Rice has it knocked down. 3.53 to go in the half. Tim Brown has caught just one. Play fake. Rice in trouble. Scott Dobb, number 63, and Matt Johnson, number 51. Fourth down. The Irish will punt. Vince Phelan gets the win behind him for his fourth punt of the ball game. And the return is on all the way. Not a great punt, but might get a Notre Dame roll, which it does. Well, there's cardinal rule number one. Don't let it hit the ground. Never let it hit the ground if you can help it. Now, that might have been a little risky to attack that ball because it was a poor punt. It was a low punt, and it might have been tough to feel. But normally, you don't want to ever let a punt hit the ball unless you're standing on your 10-yard line. With 3.04 to go in the half. Blair Thomas might have 100 yards by halftime. Well, there's good popping. You can just hear the pads cracking all the way up here. A Blair Thomas touchdown is the difference thus far. And this is Thomas with the ball. A lot of room. Boom. He stumbled when he made his cut. There's a flag down at the 21-yard line. Thomas. Short side of the field and not for much. Not for much. Not trying to get all the yards back in one play, dividing it up amongst two, but they didn't get it a big enough share of the yardage back on that one, Burn. Many times in this situation, defensively, you go with a safe punt type team. That's your first defense with a punt returner as safety. Third and 12. Play fake. And Kisner keeps, goes out of bounds, and that stops the clock, which will be to Notre Dame's advantage. Good discipline on part of Notre Dame. Chris Klaus on the punt. Into the and there you go. There's the effect of the wind again, and the Irish will get it inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. 1.42 to go in the half, and Rice to throw. Maybe. Knocked down again. Karpinski. Keith Karpinski. Tony Rice is having problems. He's hit many more of the Penn State uniforms than he has his own. Pat Terrell hurries on to the lineup. Rice keeps it. Doesn't get much. Tackle made by Quintus McDonald. Third and eight with 1.13 to go on the half. Tim Brown has caught one pass for 29 yards. That was back early in the first quarter. Rice is one out of six for those 29 yards. This time, has time and has a man wide open. Guess who? Down at the four, Tim Brown. Coming across from the slot formation. hit 75% of his passes this year. Option pass. Graham back. Oh, he missed a man on the left 
side. And that pass is intercepted. He had Andy Heck open to the left side. His third interception of the season. Now note the time that the quarterback does get here. Short sprint action to the left, sets up now. Nice and poised, just, just waiting, letting it develop. Boom, throws it a little bit behind Andy Heck. And there is the strong safety, or what they call the hero. And he is a hero right now. So the chance to tie negated by the second pass interception of the first half. And the clock will wind out. Here's the kick. And it comes to the near side where Anthony Johnson grabs it for the Irish. And again, boom, they will have good field position. Go back to the toying cost that opened the game. The coin toss, not the toying cost. <laughs> and Notre Dame won that coin flip. They elected to delay the option till the second half. And the reason they did, as Lou Holtz told us last night, is because we want the win in the fourth quarter. That is what they'll have. It may not make much difference the way they're throwing the ball. They just maybe throw it a little further over the top. In the meantime, they'll go into this stiff breeze with a wind chill factor of minus eight here at University Park, Pennsylvania. First and ten, Irish. Tony Rice, the quarterback, hands it off. Mark Green, not much there. 24, second down and eight. There's the pitch. It was late, but Mark Green gets it, and he's knocked down at the 41-yard line. Boy, that pitch is hung out there. You know, the wind can have an effect on a ball pitched parallel to the line of scrimmage. Like, that was pitched out in front of the quarterback, not back. And, you know, the wind can bounce that thing around. Ricky Waters, the freshman tailback, is in the ballgame for the first time on third and three for the Irish. The fullback gets the give, and he is stuck. Braxton Banks hit by Pete Giftopoulos, and Notre Dame will have to punt. Previously kicks of 30, 27, and 24 when he's had to kick it to Jim Coates into the breeze. And Coates waits for it at the 30. He's just 35 yards away. That one hangs up. Coates, no fair catch. Oh, he did call fair catch. Yeah. And he's got it at the 31-yard line. First and 10 at the 31, a 14-7 ball game. Blair Thomas with 98 yards in the first half. Coates in motion. Gisner. Whoa! Oh, good pass. Tommy Gorman really had good penetration, got up there and stuffed both the, the pulling linemen right back into the running back scores. Second down and 13, Penn State. Pitch left, Blair Thomas into the second Look at him, watch at him. out. Look at him. Down to the 38-yard line. Corny Southall saved the touchdown. A 34-yard Thomas run, he's well over 100. From the 38, first and 10. Thomas goes left, gets a block from Green, bounces off a tackle, breaks loose, high steps, fumbles the ball, and the Irish recover at the 22. Ricky Waters, the outstanding freshman who had a 74-yard run last week in the win over Alabama, tackled by Matt Johnson. Tim Brown has touched the ball on offense twice today. Three times, beg your pardon. Ricky Waters gets it and searches. Third and two. 14-7, state leads. Quick flip, Tim Brown. Evades a tackle. Might have enough for the first down. Forward progress at the 33 and a half. Is that Trey Bauer out there? Yep. Boy, he's covering a lot of ground. Illegal motion. Offense. Five-yard penalty. We take third down. If they're going to throw, they normally sprint out in this situation. Tony Rice is two out of seven. He's hit both passes to Tim Brown, who's in motion. And he does sprint out. Pulls up, fires it deep, has a man open. Brown, right first down. That's a nice job on him. At both ends. First and 10, Irish, 10-19 to go, third quarter. There's the fullback dive. There he gave it to Big him. hole. Nice cut. Anthony Johnson, he has one man to beat. Gets a block and is tackled at the 30-yard line. Johnson breaking a long one. His longest run of the season was 20 yards. That one, I think, was a little longer. 32, Dick. Audible by Tony Rice. Ball at the 31. And the fullback straight up the middle again. At the 25-yard line, it's Anthony Johnson, the South Bend sophomore. Second and four from the 25, a 14-7 Penn State lead in the third quarter. Pitch back, Ricky Waters gets a good block from his fullback to the 20 and drives 
Jackson's into the 16-yard line. He might have gotten the 50. He's a big kid. 6'3", 180 with he a nice gait. He might be the reason they move Mark Green, the starting tail, back to wide receiver when Tim Brown graduates next year. And they're doing it on the ground now into the teeth of this fierce gale blowing out of the north in Pennsylvania. Big hole, Ricky Waters to the 11-yard line. Second and five from the 11. Notre Dame trails by seven. Tony Rice turns Good the corner. Touchdown, Notre Dame, his second of the game. Here he is. He gets the fake inside, freezes Gustafless. Now he's moving inside out on the play. Right there, he couldn't make the play. Good quickness by Rice. Good speed. He gets it in for the touchdown. Nice kick. It's good. 8.16 to go in the third quarter, and the Notre Dame ground game has come alive. This ball isn't going to go too far. Nope. Taken at the 28. And tackled at the 30-yard line. 14-14 ball game. Draw play. Blair Thomas for a couple. There's the student section. They were filled in the first half. Boy, the whistle blew at halftime. And the kids went down to get coffee or something and decided to stay there. Reverse. Michael Alexander to the 40-yard line. Could be a first down. Corny Southall makes they've the been They've been effective all year with that. He's run that play about three or four times for 11-yard average. They might as well keep running this play. That's, oh, there they got back to him. See, that's that same play. He's been running very efficiently through the whole ball game. But George Dreeter had good penetration up time there and got him before he could cut it back. How you doing there, Steve-O? <laughs> Who are you picking today, Oklahoma or Nebraska? Well, I think Nebraska is probably the better team, but they've had a tendency to lose it in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma's had an unbelievable record of doing very well against Nebraska in that situation. I promise you, I'm not as fast as I was, but I guarantee I wish I were in Lincoln where it's warmer. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I wonder if you even care who wins that game. Just get this one over with. <laughs> That's right. Okay, Steve. <laughs> Steve Davis was 34-1-1 and one as the quarterback of Barry Switzer's team. Here's Kinzer back to throw. Screen pass left side. Great block. Oh, did he ever get a great block, and Thomas slips. Third and two, 14-14 ball game. Six minutes to go, third quarter. Made contact. 5-49 to go, third quarter. The pitch to Thomas. Turns the corner. Oh, is he having a dandy afternoon. You know, First it's down, just Notre remarkable. Dame. That's that same play again. They have stopped the cutback. He says, you stop the cutback. I'm going outside. First and ten. John Green, the pullback. There's that cutback. And he's still fighting. How about the effort? That'll get a hand from the frozen troops. Great block by Steve Wisniewski, number 66, was playing right guard. He really fired out and got after the linebacker and allowed that cutback. Steve Wisniewski. Second and one, 14-14 ball game. Ball at the 27-yard line. Penn State going in for the go-ahead touchdown. Blair Thomas. And that's the first down inside the 25. Ned Bullcar with the tackle. And Penn State and Notre Dame are tied. Both are bound for bowl games. Both in all likelihood will play on New Year's Day. Notre Dame will go to the Cotton Bowl. The invitation to be issued after this game. We're told that Penn State will go to the Citrus Bowl. And the wind chill factor has fallen to minus 20. From the 25 first down, Thomas comes to the short side of the field. Terrific defensive effort stops him at the 22. It's second down and six, 335 to go on this horrid day in Penn State. There's the cadence call again. No flags this time. And Thomas Look at that cuts cut. inside a block from Green. Nice blocking by John Green. Polkar again with a tackle. <laughs> Toss it back. Now watch John Green on the linebacker. He keeps his feet, keeps after him, allows him to cut back. Good job of blocking. Blair Thomas on the bench. An outstanding freshman named Gary Brown is in. They give it to Green, however. And the fullback fights for just a yard or two down to the 12. All the talk about the Heisman Trophy awaiting Tim Brown, who is the leading contender, but how about Thomas for next year? With the wind and uh, really a limited passing attack in this condition, it's tough to get it to the flanker. Kisner, that'll be thrown away. Did that on purpose. Good job. Don't take the sack down in that territory. Third and nine. Kisner back. A lot of time in the end zone. Yeah. Incomplete. They went to a double zone coverage, covered up short, and they backed him up with a safety on each side. Tough to get that one in there, Vern. This is Eric Eats. 
the senior from Winter Springs Florida 28 yard field goal to break the tie the kick is up no good we're still tied and now the ground attack Braxton banks in in the wishbone as a fullback Tim Brown circles to the outside and gets to the 25 they're getting into that wishbone again Second down and five, 218 to go, third quarter. Tied at 14, the pullback for one. Braxton Banks, the sophomore from Hayward, California. 14-14 game. Here comes the reverse again. Tim Brown looks for a block and doesn't get it, but gets by the potential tackle and is out of bounds at the 35-yard line. 41, Kurt Vernier almost made that play. That shows the quickness of Tim Brown. 14-14 game, 94 seconds to go, third quarter. There's the fullback dive. Braxton Banks out to the 35-yard line. Pete Giftopoulos, number 90, made the tackle. Second and nine with 55 seconds to go, third quarter. Waters looks for blocking help, gets it, but only gets a couple of yards. With 18 seconds to go, it's third and seven. play third quarter draw draw play that did not work Oatoa Pulamalu the senior out of Santa Ana California from Samoa made the tackle and tied at the end of three 14 14 Vince Phelan on the punt to Jim Coates and Michael Timpson and the wind has subsided at least for the moment high snap high snap Phelan controls and not a great kick Michael Timpson he has great speed. Down to the 25-yard line. Hand off goes to Blair Thomas. Or is it John Green? John Green. Oh, Gary, Gary Brown. Brown, number 27. They really like Gary Brown, the freshman running back. They say he's a good one. Kins Kisner into the flat, caught by Gary Brown, and tackled from behind as he gets to the 32-yard line, West Pritchett. down and four 12 35 to go Kisner first down Jim Coates the tiny senior first down at the 49 yard line did you see what he did that time coach actually looked like he was going to go in motion then stopped now they throw him a little quick hitch little quick pop pass to the right of the screen boom one two three fire it there he is coming there man-to-man -man coverage good tackle right there by Corny South. Uh, Brandy Wells, too, number five, came in on it. First and then Penn State. 14-14 game. Notre Dame has not left. They trail by 7-0 in 14-7. That was the score at halftime. It's now 14-all. Draw play. Ooh. Nope. As Thomas does manage to get a couple after the first contact was made. Mike Griffin, really a good penetration that time. Well, these Arctic yeah. conditions oh, seem God. make it seem appropriate to bring up the old Lewis Grizzard line. Life is like a dog sled team. If you ain't the lead dog, the view never changes. <laughs> <laughs> Both these teams. <laughs> I, I was just motivated by <laughs> the atmosphere. Second and eight. 11:38 <laughs> to go in the ball game. Draw play again. Thomas, look at those feet. Look at him dance. What a dandy run. Oh, always in control. Great foot move, great pounding action, gets that foot down, and off he goes. Matt Sickler, number 50, the offensive right tackle, does a nice job of taking the man down underneath him. Gorman turns him inside, number 87, gets another right block right there by number 58, Kuzi. Good play. Oh, I'll tell you, he makes things happen. Blair Thomas loses a yard. For the game now, he has 181 yards on the ground, and the Notre Dame attack has accounted in all for 182. Looks like Notre Dame's going to come after him. 
Kisner into the flat. Yeah, they're audible into that. Notre Dame was lined up in a man-to-man -man coverage, Vern, and they had everybody up. Looked like they were going to put pressure on him. I think he checked off to that quick hitch. Kisner pumps out of trouble. Caught short at the 32. It'll be fourth and long, well out of field goal range with the win. Fourth and four. Kisner back. Across the middle, bobbled and caught. First and ten. Penn Good State. Job. Paul Pomfret, the senior Paul from Pomfret. Clifton, New Jersey. He only has 14 catches on his career, and that might have been the most important one. That's a gutsy call. A real gutsy call. First and ten, Penn State. Blair Thomas cuts back. It's a cutback. Look at him work. Well, I know the Emmett Smith supporters are going to be upset, but consider me one who's going to advocate this kid as a strong candidate for the Heisman next year. What a game he's having, and what a season he's had. Here's Thomas. Look at the footwork. 198 yards for Blair Thomas. I would imagine Foz Fazio, the defensive coordinator right now, is having some fits. Penn State fans are loving this thus far. Eight and a half and a most impressive Penn State drive into the win. Thomas again. He's over 200. First down at the two-yard line. Good blocking by Wisniewski, number 66, pulling from the left guard position. Penn State fullback John Green would score on a short touchdown run, and the Nittany Lions would add the point after to take a 21-14 lead with less than eight minutes remaining in the game. Blair Thomas with 205 yards. Add to that total. He becomes the first running back since Kurt Warner in 81 to go over 200 yards. The school record, if you want to put it in the back of your mind, is Kurt Warner for 256 against Syracuse. Jim Brock is standing by with Steve Davis. Steve? And thank you, Vernon. This is Jim Brock, the executive director. When Doug Flutie threw the pass against Miami, he bit off his cigar. Now it's frozen next time. Jim, you've got to be uh, interested in Notre Dame, and you're going to offer them the uh, invitation to the Cotton Bowl yes. today. Yes. Uh, Dan Petty, our president, and J.L. Huffman and myself plan to be in the dressing room at the game, Steve, to offer the invitation. We'll just have to see what happens. Do you think they'll accept? Well, I believe they will, but let's just see. You know, there's still a lot of things out there, but uh, we're, I think both these football teams, this has been a tremendous game. One of these football teams, both of these football teams are going to get an invitation today. If Notre Dame won, what do you think their answer would be? <laughs> well, we'll just have to wait and see. This has been a tremendous game. Two great teams, institutions, coaches. This is what college football is all about. We're just pleased to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thank Hoss you, Steve. Yeah, let me tell you about Hoss Brock. He didn't come up here from the warmth of Dallas to be turned down by Notre Dame. <laughs> They're going to the Cotton Bowl. Third and two, 5.18 to go. Oh, and a fine play. defensive play. It'll be fourth down, and the Irish will get it back. And again, Ned Bullcar, who's having a terrific afternoon. Good football player. And he has another year. Chris Klaus's last punt into the wind went 12 yards. This one goes considerably farther. That's a kind Tim of Brown, turn. though, at the 30. I think they're not conscious of Tim Brown. First and ten, Ricky Waters is in a tailback. Tony Rice will throw. He's going deep, and Willie Thomas never bit on the ball. A great job defensively as Tim Brown went deep, and now an elbow is thrown, and Tim Brown gets into it. Rice back. That one is caught. That's a nice throw. First down at the 46. He's audibly burned. Comes the option. He had no one to pitch to because somebody didn't went pick the up the way. audible. Yeah, Ricky Waters went Ricky the wrong Waters way. Went the wrong way. Second down and two. Three and a half to go in the game. Here's Green. Oh, beautiful play. Brian Chismer. Beautiful defensive play. And Notre Dame three of nine on third down conversions. Option pass. Into the flat. Caught. First down Notre Dame if there's no turnover. And there's not. Anthony Johnson, the fullback, makes the grab. First and ten from the 30. Irish will go for two if the option presents itself. Here's Green. You said the option presents itself. The option just presented itself right there. They ran a very well executed trap option. You'll note now he'll fake in the one direction. Come off the fake. 
See, now go the other way. Freezing linebackers has the lineman up in front of him. Tommy Freeman, number 65, gets a knockdown block. Turns the corner. 2.15 remaining in the ball game. First and 10, Notre Dame, they trail by seven. The fullback, Anthony Johnson, to the 13-yard line. Sophomore out of South Bend. Tackle made by Giftopoulos and Bauer, the two inside linebackers. And the clock shows 1.56 in running. Remember last year, it came right down to the fourth quarter play, and it took a great defensive play by Gary Wilkerson to bat a pass away. Here they are now. Shoes on the other foot. Second and six. They'll keep it on the ground and come to the short side. And Rice is not there for the first down. It's inside the 10. But Pete Kirkendall denies him, and it'll be third down. Third and two with the ball at the nine. Going to run the ball twice here, huh? What do you think, Vern? Yes. Rice keeps. I don't think he's got the first down. No, I don't think he made the first. But... And it'll be fourth and about two feet. Inches. That's short. All right, coach. You're going to run the ball. Fourth and one. Fourth, fourth and an inch. One ten to go. From the wishbone. 21 14, 70 seconds remaining in the ball game. Does Notre Dame have all their timeouts? They've got two left. Yeah, I see it on the front. Fullback, first and goal, Notre Dame. And the clock will stop in college football while they move the chain, and Lou Holtz will send the play in with Tim Brown. He runs over and gets the play. <laughs> Here it is just the fullback guy. There he is, number 22, left middle of your screen. Hands it off. He's not reading it. He just handed it off. First down. Brown goes left. First and goal from the four. And Rice will throw. No, he won't. He'll run. And he's close. Did he get it? I don't think they're going to give it to him. Boy, no, sir. Close. seconds to go and it up same play they made the first down on on the fourth down call now they come back and make the touchdown and Lou Holtz on the sideline he's anything but unemotional but this time he's got his mind on the two-point play and there's the signal they're one for five on the season they trail by one with 31 seconds to go and here we are and the quarterback is Tony Rice Brown in the slot they've got him double covered now Karpinski comes in. Here's the rollout. No way. No. Pete Kirkendall over to the right side of your screen. Screen number 73 ends up being the hero. Here he is working inside out now. Here he is getting penetration upfield. Quarterback turns back up in there. There he is. He makes the tackle. And how about the job by Keith Karpinski, number 84, to penetrate and Good force him inside? Penetration pushed him back inside. They said the defense, the success of the defense today depended on how well Karpinski played. Zed Bottle will kick off. Onside kick. Recovered by Penn State at the 45. 31 seconds remaining, 21-20, Penn State leads. And the streak continues. The Penn State Nittany Lions will go to 8-3, bound for a New Year's Day Bowl. The Irish of Notre Dame will fall to 8-2. They're bound for the Cotton Bowl. And if Oklahoma, Nebraska can equal this, it'll be a continuation of a terrific Saturday of college football here on CBS.